Cinco de Mayo. It's uh, Tuesday, May 5th, and uh, I'm glad to be with you this morning and uh, just excited about what God has in store for the day. I hope you are as well. God's got good things for you, and uh, I believe that. Uh, just a couple of quick updates. We still um, are taking food donations for the... Um, for the Brantford Food Pantry. So uh, yesterday was a little sparse. So I'm hoping we we pick up the pace today and uh, get lots of us bringing food here to the church. Uh, the doors will basically be open till pretty late today. So um, any pretty much any time today, just come by. Um, if you're outside in your car and, and don't want to come in, just let us know. Uh, I'll come out and and get that for you, bring it in. Otherwise, there's some tables here in the foyer, or you can just put it by, um, you know, put it in the foyer of the church. And um, you don't have to be a Shoreline Community Church member to, you know, do a good thing here and help us out. So, uh, and you can always take it right to the food uh, bank um, in Brantford as well. So, uh, and don't forget, Mother's Day is this weekend, this Sunday. So, remind you about that as well. Um, Someone reminded me today, and I uh, took care of mom, so uh, I'm reminding you. So there's that. Um, so I want to look in the book of Matthew this morning at a pretty interesting story, and I, I, maybe I want to talk about uh, perspective today. Um, I think if if someone came and asked you, uh, if your life is blessed, I have a feeling you'd probably say, yeah, my life's very blessed. Um, I mean, especially here in the United States, as Americans, we, uh, we are, are, are blessed. I mean, we, we have um, an abundance of food. Um, most of us have roof over our head and shelter. And if we don't own or rent our own place, we're able to find shelter. Um, we, uh, up until this pandemic, the vast, vast, and even now, the vast, vast, vast majority of Americans, even though the unemployment rate is way higher than normal right now, um, but the vast majority of us have means to um, make uh, you know, have an income. Uh, we, we live in a society where we have freedom of speech, speech freedom of religion, freedom of the press. Uh, we get to vote. Um, I mean, that is just, just the ability to vote is a right that we take for granted that is not afforded to much of the world's population. Um, so there are, we, we have so, 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 so many blessings. So I think, I think if we were being honest and we were putting things in perspective, I think most of us, uh, the vast majority of us would say that our life is blessed. And yet at the same time, we are susceptible to complain when, uh, when we have hiccups in our our very blessed life, listen. This is not a judgment. I'm I'm maybe um, maybe the the worst offender um, in in this case because I I don't like discomfort and I don't like when things aren't going my way. So um, lest you think I'm I'm um, you know preaching at you, I'm preaching to myself here, um, talking. Um, so, there's a story in Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. I um, hope you grab your Bible and you, you read. Um, if, you get our, if you get these via email, there's always a link um, to the scriptures that we, that we uh, give you every day. So, Matthew 9, 1 through 8 says this, Jesus climbed into a boat, went back across the lake to his own town. Some people brought him a paralyzed man on a mat. And seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Be encouraged, my child, your sins are forgiven. Some of the teachers of the religious law said to themselves, Well, that's blasphemy. Does he think he's God? No, he didn't think he was God. He knew he was God. 
You don't think you're God if you're God. Anyways, Jesus knew what they were thinking. He said to them, oh, why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up and he went home. Fear swept through the crowd as they saw this happen, and they praised God for giving humans such authority. This man had been paralyzed. That was his reality. It's possible, and there are people who go their whole lives with sickness, disease, um, paralyzation, blindness, you know, their whole life, their whole life. That's, that's their whole reality in life. And there are people that are born into extreme poverty and they die in extreme poverty. That's their whole life. Now, if you've ever had the opportunity to go and be on a missions trip or you know someone who has um, some kind of illness or sickness or, or they're blind, you know, they're paralyzed, they, they have lupus, they, you know, um, uh, Crohn's disease, you know, we could list all kinds of things. And you meet them and they are upbeat and they are happy and you wonder, here's what we do. We wonder how in the world could they be like that? One word, perspective. We don't know what this man's reality was every day. This paralyzed man may have been the happiest, well-adjusted, wonderful person to be around. He could have been gregarious. He could have been the life of any room that he was in. Um, or maybe he was just a miserable, horrible person that nobody wanted to be around. Nobody wanted to help out. Uh, he whined and complained about his lot in life. We have no idea. We have no idea. Now, what we do know is Jesus comes and he changes this man's reality. We do know that this man was paralyzed and then he wasn't. His reality may have changed, but what we don't know is what his perspective was. Was his perspective one of joy and contentment in either condition or misery and complaining and you know, it's God's fault and God did this. We don't know. Here's what we do know. Every single person who's watching this knows someone that you can look at and go, I don't know how they are always so upbeat and how they have such. And every single one of us know people who have tremendous amounts of blessings in their life and they're miserable and they're, they're people you don't want to be around and, and they, they suck the air out of the room. We all know those people. If you don't know those that person, you're that person, probably, okay? Because we all know people like that. You have you have a family member that just sucks the life. You go to the family reunion, you're like, oh my goodness, aunt so and so, uncle such and such, my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad, the cousin, the nephew. Somebody's going to be there that you're just like, ah, oh, I gotta, you know. I got to steal myself emotionally to, to, to deal with this. There's that person that you work with. There's, it doesn't matter what's going on in life. They're the victim. It doesn't matter what's going on in life. Life is miserable. It doesn't matter what's going on in life. There's always the cloud <laughs> that's, that's blocking the sun for them. They are, if, if you were to put the perspective on, if you were to put a label on it, they're the Eeyore right in the room. And then there's this other person that you look at him and you go, why in the world are they so joyful, so happy, so, it seems like everything goes wrong in their life, but they find a way to turn it around. It's all perspective. You and I have the choice right now in the midst of our 
uncontrollable situation. Do we face it with hope and faith? Do we face it with confidence that God's got everything under control? Or do we just whine and complain? And you know, the reality is this is this is where we're at. Can I tell you? You're where you are. You and I, we don't have any control over it. What we do have control over is how we respond to it and how we approach it. So may God help us to have the right perspective today. Lord, I pray that for everyone who's discouraged, and it is getting discouraging, it's going on for a long time, and we want to just get back to normal. And what is normal? Is there a new normal? Is, uh, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to have perspective. And the perspective is this. This is a moment. This is a moment. You hold eternity in your hand. Not only do you hold eternity in your hand, you hold us in your hand. And that gives us hope. And we can face tomorrow. And we can face the future. We can face whatever comes our way because you, oh God, have it all in the palm of your hand. Help us, help us to have the right perspective today, I pray. In Christ's name, amen. Hey, I hope to see you bringing some food over today. Let's bless the food pantry, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Blessings.